what got me interested in science? I think my backyard back in Silverton, Oregon, you walk outside and you see earth. See it, things, you see a row of ants walking down the sidewalk. It's like, wow, look at that. Why are they walking in a line? What happens if one of them gets lost? Where are they going? It's telling you a story and the answers aren't in the back of the story. You have to figure things out yourself. So I got interested in science because of Earth. We conduct science on the International Space Station because it is an environment where human beings are not innately meant to be. And because of that, you can learn things about human physiology. You can learn things about physics and chemistry that are impossible to learn on Earth. There are two main categories of science. You have the programmatic science. This is well-planned, well-thought-out, peer-reviewed, and uplinked to station with the supplies needed. And then you have what I call science of opportunity. And this is science that comes to mind while you are there simply because you are there and you can do it because you can. Scientific disciplines that I've dabbled in on the International Space Station, fluid physics, classic physics, chemistry, biology, plant growth, Earth observations that are unique from a, an orbital environment. A number of my science of opportunity investigations have resulted in peer-reviewed scientific papers. Uh, one is growing sodium chloride crystals. And a salt shaker won't work in weightlessness, right? It'll be a mess. So the NASA food people have a little squeeze bottle of a saturated solution of sodium chloride and you can put that on your food if you want to add salt. And I was using this saturated solution of sodium chloride to do aqueous phase crystal growth of sodium chloride crystals. And there were a number of fascinating observations that could be made by doing this in weightlessness and resulted in these three publications. The particle agglomeration. I had bags of various kinds of powder You've got powdered milk, and you've got freeze-dried coffee in a bag, and instead of putting water in it, you can blow the bag up, and you can look at it, and you can see what happens when you shake it up. And I, I was playing with all these bags, and in every case, these particles, millimeter size, just floating around, would rapidly, in tens of seconds, form centimeter size clumps. And I thought, wow, isn't that cool? All these different particles. I filmed it, and Stan Love, who's uh, an astronaut in the office, who is a planetary geologist by training, he saw that, and he said that this has implications to planet formation. How you go from something that's one millimeter to something the size of your fist it has not been really understood. And these simple videos that I downlinked helped scientists understand what that process is. And it doesn't get any better than that when casual observations, simply because you are there and you can, calling it science of opportunity, leads to opening up a whole new level of investigation. We had some educational demonstrations with Legos, making various things for, for student downlink. And after that was all done, I said, hey, can I use the Legos to make something that I'd like to make? And uh, sure, go ahead, use the Legos. And I used the Legos to make a Van de Graaff generator. And this allowed me to have a source of static electric voltage and I did a lot of observations with water and other solutions, making these Taylor cones in the weightless environment. 
And then one time I was giving a presentation to university level students and we started talking and we had this collaboration and using my data with graduate students published a paper in PhysRev Letters. And the neatest aspect about this paper is in the experimental section, it says roller and belt Van de Graaff generator was made on space station out of Legos. And it's like, wow, PhysRev Letters, peer-reviewed scientific publication. And part of the data came from a piece of equipment that was made from Legos. That's science of opportunity. It's inevitable when you have a laboratory, whether it's on Earth or in space or on the moon, there will be science of opportunity because of the people that are doing research. Uh, they will have other ideas and they will see things simply because they are there and they can and they'll mess around a little bit and maybe most of that won't uh, go anywhere but every once in a while there'll be one of those that turn into the next generation of programmatic science. I'm Don Pettit. I'm a NASA astronaut. Subscribe for more space.